Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Welcome to worship on this Easter Sunday. Let us begin with a word of prayer. Good and gracious God, we give you thanks. We give you thanks for the life, death, and the resurrection of your Son. Give us grace, give us hope, give us love, give us whatever you see that we need to share this message with those we encounter. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <laughs> good news comes to us from the Gospel of John, the 20th chapter. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I have ascended to my Father and your Father to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them all the things that he had said to her. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I just wanted a little razzmatazz, you know, nothing fancy, nothing over the top. Maybe just, you know, streamers, you know, coming down off the rafters, maybe some balloons. They don't have to be fancy balloons. They could be just the balloons you get at Walmart. Just get a few thousand of those and just have them, you know, come down on us when we worship. I, you know, a little spice in our sauce. That's all I was looking for. It's Easter. It could be modest. It doesn't have to be over the top. I was just thinking, you know, a, a glitter cannon. 
maybe. Or jugglers. Jugglers are always fun. Get a couple of jugglers. One of them could be juggling fire. That would be pretty great. Maybe a chorus line. Again, we could keep it simple. Uh, you know, keep it pretty modest. Just six or 17 uh, chorus line members, men and women, singing and dancing behind me as I preached. I mean, they could do that stomp thing where you could feel it in your guts. I, I just... I just think people would like that. People would like a little bit oomph in their Easter. You know, a little, a little something special like uh, fireworks, maybe. Not a whole set. Not like 40 minutes of a whole show of fireworks. I'm just saying two or three off up in the, up in the rafters. You know, one of them could be in the shape of an angel. They do that now. How awesome would that be? I just wanted something, a little spectacle. You know, maybe a lion. One lion. It doesn't have to be a full-grown lion. It could be almost a baby lion. I mean, a little bit bigger than a cup, but just one well-trained lion that could roar on command. I just thought it'd be good to have a little something special for Easter this year. Obviously, none of that happened. One of the great disappointments of my life. No, they said, uh, it's not in the budget. They said, uh, it's uh, not smart to combine fireworks and streamers, they said. Whatever. Uh, it's not in the insurance to cover wild animals. It, it's fine. Fine. We're not going to have the spectacle. But what really stung is, well, it was Pastor Justin, and he did it kindly, but when he pointed out that Jesus didn't have any spectacle, that uh, Jesus himself, on the day of resurrection, Moments from rising from the grave. He didn't have sound and lights. He didn't have some angel army, you know, with trumpets and horns and songs and noise and, and fireworks. No, all Jesus did was say one word. And we imagine he probably said it fairly, fairly quietly, pretty steady, pretty calmly. It was a word of, of deep relationship. It was a word of knowing and being known. It was a word of loving and being loved. The word was... Mary. Mary's name is what he said. And it could be any one of our names. I mean, just Mary was the one who was there, but it could be your name. Jesus could have said your name on that day. It was a word of, of deep relationship and love. That's how Jesus announced his resurrection to the world. So I guess, honestly, if it's good enough for Jesus, it should be good enough for me. I don't need the spectacle. I don't need to wave my arms. I don't need to raise my voice. I can stay calm. I can just state plainly the truth of the situation. I can do that. I will be honest, though. It will be a challenge. Not only because the resurrection is the biggest thing to ever happen in the history of everything, which it is, but also because we've been through a lot to get here. It's been a journey to get to this place. We're tired. We need to hear that good news. And sometimes there's a part of me that wants to make it into a spectacle so that we can all hear it better. Because it's been tough. Listen, uh, Thursday was Monday Thursday. And we celebrated, you know, the, the Last Supper. But we also told the story of Jesus' rejection and betrayal. And we've heard that story before, but we've also lived that story. Everyone who's lived any number of years on this planet, we have lived that story of rejection. We know what that feels like. Whether for you it's that classic story of you know, walking into a middle school lunchroom with your tray and not having any safe place to sit and just that, that sinking feeling in your chest where you just, it just sinks down into your belly and you just feel, you feel bad about yourself, you feel bad about the world, it's miserable and you have to just go and sit in the corner somewhere and just feel awful. Or whether it's maybe older life you're, I don't know, in your 20s or even your 30s, whenever. It could be any age. And the person that you love, the person that you thought was the one, the person you thought was going to be, you know, the rest of your life, they're, they're walking out the door. They've packed all their things. They're taking their, themselves away. And you just think, if I could just put the right words together and say them in the right way, and maybe, maybe they'll, they'll turn around and come back. But they don't. They just keep walking out of your life. That feeling of just absolute rejection. That feeling of, like, how am I going to go on with my day tomorrow? Or maybe, honestly, you've always struggled. Maybe for some reason, from the very beginning, you've just always had a hard time making friends. I've had a hard time relating to people. You want that. You, want, you see people you know, laughing and talking together, hanging out, and you think, man, that would be nice. That would be awesome. I would love that. And you just don't know, 
You just don't know how to get it. You don't know how to do it. And so that feeling of rejection is just sometimes always there in the background. Just kind of a low hum that you've gotten used to, but that doesn't mean it doesn't hurt. No, I'm just saying, I'm just saying we've experienced rejection. We know what that's like. And then the next day was Good Friday, and Good Friday is the cross. Good Friday is encountering the reality of death. And we've all been there too. Anyone who's ever, you know, spent any time on this planet, any lived a few years, we've, we've encountered the reality of death. We have to. And whether for you, it's that moment when it was an otherwise unremarkable day, a day that you would have absolutely forgotten otherwise, except then you got that phone call and everything collapsed around you. Maybe your whole body did too. I mean, maybe your body physically stopped working because you just didn't even know how to process the news. Or maybe it was a, a whole different way. Maybe it was that slow, painful process in the hospital room or you've moved the hospital bed into the living room and days pass, weeks pass, and everybody is miserable and hurting and you're not even sure what to pray for anymore. Whatever it is, however you've experienced it, we've all had to confront death. We've all stood at the graveside. We've all felt that feeling of looking around at people like driving in the road and you wonder how can they go on as if the world didn't just end. We've, we've been there. And then Saturday, Saturday is just that long, gray, cold day where it feels like God is as far away from us as possible, where we just don't even feel Jesus nearby, and it just feels like nothing's ever going to change or get better. The cancer's not going away. The injury's not healing. Our child, whom we love, their addiction is just getting worse, and it just is that, that feeling of despair, you know, that feeling like this is how it's always going to be. We're never going to feel normal again. We're never going to feel better again. It's that... That's Saturday. I mean, I'm just saying we've been through a lot to get to here, to get to this, to this moment, to get to this day, and it is understandable if you have come into this day just exhausted, just feeling like there's no even reason why we're even bothering. If you've come into this day, if you, if you stumbled out of bed and if you shrugged onto your clothes and then you shuffled here to church expecting the same, Expecting everything to be like it always is. Expecting just no, nothing special, nothing different. Well, if that is you, it's totally understandable and you're in good company because that's exactly what Mary thought. Mary shuffled to the tomb. I mean, she heard some rumors. She knew what Jesus said, but make no mistake, she expected to find a dead body that day. She expected the world was just going to roll on as it always does. She expected that death would win, rejection would win, despair would win. That is what she thought would happen that first Easter morning. The thing is, Jesus was alive. And that changes everything. She saw the bedclothes lying there. She heard the words of the angels. And then standing in that garden with life bursting out underneath her, she heard her name said in this gentle, calming voice. Everything changed on that day. Jesus is risen and that shifts all of it around. Everything is transformed. Everything is brand new. It's hard. It's hard to stay calm. It's hard not to shout and carry on, but if it's good enough for Jesus, rejection is swallowed up by love because of Easter Sunday. Death is swallowed up by life. Despair is swallowed up by hope because Jesus is raised. Everything is is different. We always have reason to hope. It is a victory. It is freedom. It is freedom over sin. It's freedom over death. It's freedom over death. It's freedom over the power of of the devil in our world. It is freedom to live the lives we're created to be, the created to live. It's freedom to have hope in every single possible circumstance. Jesus' resurrection means that we have this promise 
that drives forward every human heart, that fills every single one of our lungs when we breathe. It's this promise that fills us up from the inside and pours out because everything has changed. Because if Christ is alive, that means that we are alive. It means that death does not win. It means there is no eternal death. It means we always have hope. You know what? Enough. I know that Jesus stayed calm. I get it. But Jesus is Jesus. And I'm not Jesus. No, if I'm going to be anybody in the story, I can be Mary. Because what Mary did is Mary raced from that encounter with Christ, crying out as loud as she could, I have met the Lord. I have seen the Lord. And so we can do the same. We don't have to stay calm. We can be the spectacle. So we can play every single key on that organ and we can make those horns sound so loud that our ears hurt and we can sing until our voices go hoarse because he is risen. pray for the world, the church, and all of God's creation. Holy One, we give you thanks for the resurrection of your Son. Instill in your world a sense of hope, a sense of peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, we give you thanks for your church and all of its expressions. We give you thanks for the ministry at United Lutheran and all congregations that confess you as Lord. Where we are strong, we ask you to fortify us. Where we are in error, we ask you to correct us. Where we are in need, we ask you to reform us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And most merciful God, we pray for all those in need this day, those who are sick in mind, body, and soul. Surround them with your peace and give them the grace that only you can offer. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass pass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.